Let me tell you about a queen, born in the borough of Queens, no different from you or me. Her name, Aseta, Aseta Shakur, former member of the Black Liberation Army, an army she and her people led, led for years, a fight for justice, justice we still seek. You see, in 1973, some might acknowledge him as a state trooper, but us, a pig, was murdered. Cops say Aseta was the one who did. Not enough evidence, so charge her with being an accomplice. Murder in the first degree, the next several weeks was literal hell. Aseta was beaten in interrogation at the hospital. Shift changed, they took turns, her eyes burned, but the queen never spoke. The more the pigs came with the questions and the insults and hurt, she held the pain. No answers, hatred for a black woman. New charges came. 1971, a setter had become the main hunt in a multi-state manhunt for various crimes, sentenced to life in prison. In 1977, visits with a man named Kamu Siddiqui led to a wow. Wow, I am pregnant. Pregnant in prison, you think they show remorse, shackled to a bed, kept in a men's prison, solitary confinement, not a sister to confide in, pregnant alone, um, a month into her baby being grown, a set of escape, the 1979 from Clinton Correctional Facility for Women, way to piss off the pigs. In 1984, she surfaced in Cuba. She was granted a political asylum. Pigs fought hard to have a set of her home, but it was no use. Her plan was too straight, no accidents prone. She was free. The queen from Queens went through hell and was free. She has inspired my activism on many levels to be beaten like an animal, belittled as if you're nothing, and still hold your own shows great strength. Strength. I will use the set as pain and freedom as a reason. I continue to fight in this fight. As she once said, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. And we have nothing to lose but our chains. Peace, Queen. I'm Shakur, and I was born and raised in the United States. I am a descendant of Africans who were kidnapped and brought to the Americas as slaves. I spent my early childhood in the racist, segregated South. I later moved to the northern part of the country where I realized that black people were equally victimized by racism and oppression. I grew up and became a political activist, participating in student struggles, the anti-war movement, and most of all, in the movement for the liberation of African Americans in the United States. I later joined the Black Panther Party, an organization that was targeted by the COINTELPRO program, a program that was set up by the Federal Bureau of Investigation to eliminate all political opposition to the U.S. government's policies, to destroy the black liberation movement in the United States, to discredit activists, and to eliminate potential leaders. Under the COINTELPRO program, many political activists were harassed, imprisoned, murdered, or otherwise neutralized. As a result of being targeted by COINTELPRO, I, like many other young people, was faced with the threat of prison, underground, exile, or death. The FBI, with the help of local police agencies, systematically fed false accusations and fake news articles to the press, accusing me and other activists of crimes we did not commit. Although in my case the charges were eventually dropped or I was eventually acquitted, the national and local police agencies created a situation where based on their false accusations against me, any police officer could shoot me on sight. It was not until the Freedom of Information Act was passed in the mid-70s that we began to see the scope of the United States government's persecution of political activists. 